everyone. Oh, uh oh, LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, the other one. In, um, hmm. Instagram is uh, not playing right now, but I think I'm live on uh, Facebook. So just hold. Oh boy, never a dull moment. Um, I'm going to try again and go live on Instagram. I'm not quite sure what the problem is. But, uh, no. Oh boy, okay. Sit tight, everyone, for a bit more of First Chapter Fun. Hi, Daisy from Austin. I don't know why, but uh, my internet connection is not working. Of course it isn't, because it would be too easy if everything was working properly. So, just sit tight, bear with me, people on Instagram, while I figure out my Wi-Fi, or get rid of it, as it were. And let me see, yes, thank you, Jamie, I can see that I'm on, uh, on Facebook, that's working, but Instagram is playing tricks on me, so let me see if I can just do this now. Yes, no. Ah, oh boy. Okay, so Instagram, Instagram is not working. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I can't go live on Instagram, so I'm going to have to do one of two things. Either A, just watch it go round and round, <laughs> or B, um, come back and do this later, which is generally what we do, or C, go and scream in a pillow which I think is a reasonable um, thing to do. I'm going to try one more thing. And if this doesn't work, then Instagram is just going to have to not work for today. And I'll try and go back and re-record or re-broadcast a little bit later, which is such a shame. So <laughs> sorry about this, people at home. The perils and the thrills and the um, trouble with going live no Instagram is not playing Instagram is just being a pain in my butt as it were okay all right sorry about this one last one last ditch attempt and then after that forget it after that we will um, we will go back to just Facebook so this is Instagram this is your last chance to work and if you don't work then it's just gonna be Facebook let me see let's see if I do that live no all right okay I give up all right so Instagram can um, take a hike for now hello everyone <laughs> Welcome after three minutes of technical issues to First Chapter Fun. Um, this is the place where twice a week Hank Philip Ryan and I, Hannah Mary McKinnon, read the first chapter of a different book live every Tuesday and Thursday at 12.30pm. Normally on Facebook right here and on Instagram, but Instagram isn't playing. So I know that Hank you'll be watching. If you could put something on the story maybe or or in a post or something that I'll that I'll broadcast later but it's just it's just not working I wonder if it's uh, not just me <laughs> it might be who knows anyway it's always very unsettling and unnerving when that happens because it's just it, it frazzles me but I'm here now it's 12 30 Eastern time and I am going to read a wonderful, wonderful book to you today. Not only that, let me find a picture of it. Not only that, but today is actually the 100th episode of First Chapter Fun, which is probably why we're having technical issues, because why would things run smoothly, you know, when we want to do something special? Meh, why would they indeed? So today is episode 100 and if this is the first time that you've joined first chapter fun all of the other episodes 99 of them can be found on well, I won't bother about Instagram but they are on Instagram and our IGTV but on our Facebook um, you'll find them under media in the new Facebook under media and then videos so we have 99 episodes started back in March 
um, when we started going into lockdown here in, uh, in near Toronto where I live. And ever since, um, well, there were 53 daily episodes and after that, Hank and I joined forces. And it's such a delight. Twice a week we get to read to you. And we couldn't do this without a few things. The authors like Iona, we're sure, who we're reading for today, an old called Grave, um, with authors like, without authors like Iona, we wouldn't be able to bring you their books because they always agree. We always do this with the author's agreement. The publishers, of course, because they are all backing this and, and allowing us, giving us permission to read for you. And you. If we didn't have viewers like you, we wouldn't have continued the series, but the community is growing. It's going from strength to strength. We have over 1700 members on Facebook and it truly is a joy. It truly is one of the highlights of my week because it's this little, this little half hour bubble of just pure joy where we can talk about books and I can read you a book and Hank can read you a book and it's just absolutely wonderful. So thank you for being here, for tuning in, for telling your friends about it, for bringing more members. Um, and it's because of you that we that we are able to do this. So thank you, thank you. And happy 100th uh, episode of First Chapter Fun to all of us, all of us who are building this lovely, lovely community. And I'd like to welcome my owner today. So Iona Wishaw, An Old Cold Grave. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Iona and I met last year. I remember when we were able to go out and meet people um, in the summer, it was in August, we went to a Women Killing It festival. Uh, so a festival for, for a, a writer's festival, not actually, you know, murderers or murderesses. Um, and we had such a good time and we drove back to Toronto Airport with uh, I drove back with Owen and, and her husband. It was it was just absolutely lovely and we got to know each other. So I hope, I hope that Iona is watching. I see lots and lots of um lots of uh, uh comments. Happy hundredth. <laughs> That's so kind. And I'm just checking to see Iona if you're here. I'm sorry I can't get on on uh, Instagram. I don't know what's going on um, because I obviously have a good connection on in, on ugh, dang it on Facebook, but Instagram just isn't isn't uh, uh, connecting. But Iona is here. I see her in the comments. She says hello and delighted to be here. So of course you can ask Iona questions. The nice thing about Facebook is that when you ask questions, when you leave questions or whatever whatever you comment on, those comments don't disappear. On Instagram, they do. Uh, Instagram's thumbs down today, Instagram. But when we broadcast on Instagram, if you leave comments, when we then transfer it to the archive to, or as a post to IGTV, the, um, the comments just disappear. But today, um, because we're only on Facebook for now, I'll go back to Instagram and try again afterwards, or otherwise I'll upload this video instead. Um, everything everything will stay. So you can ask Iona lots and lots of questions about where she gets her inspiration from, or this is uh, the third book in a series of seven. So there are seven books, but you don't have to read them in order. You can read them in any order you wish. You might start off with book, I don't know, seven, and then go back to, uh, to the beginning. So how is everyone? How is everyone doing? COVID cases are on the rise here still. They seem to be stabilizing again, but uh, we've just hunkered down and poor kids, they go to school mornings only, but you know, they're not seeing any of their friends otherwise. Uh, it's just, anyway, we have our little first chapter fun bubble twice a week, don't we? So let's not even talk about COVID. Let's not even think about it for the next half an hour, but I do hope you're well. I made some soup yesterday. I made vegetable soup. Um, I'm going to make some creamy tomato soup over the weekend. So it's that kind of weather. It's it's nice weather. It was horrible yesterday, but it's nice weather, but it's cooling off. The clocks are going to go backwards soon. So we'll um, we'll gain an hour, which is always fun. Um, but it's that kind of soupy, you know, leaves on the trees are all turning. And I like autumn, fall, sorry, I do. I love the run up to, to Christmas. We celebrate Christmas. Um, I'm not so fan, not so much a fan of January and February because it's just cold and miserable <laughs> most of the time. If there's snow, then that'd be great. I'll go and do some cross-country skiing or downhill. 
but let's see. Anyway, enough of the babble. Let me introduce you to Iona Wishaw and her wonderful book, An Old Cold Grave. All right, here we go. Iona Wishaw is the best-selling author of the popular Lane Winslow mystery series set in post-war Canada. Her books, originally inspired by her own mother and grandfather's history as spies in two, in two world wars, have appeared consistently on bestseller lists across Canada. A Lefty Award nominee for mystery writing, she has an MFA from the University of British Columbia. In addition to her mystery series, she writes poetry and has written a children's book called Henry and the Cow Problem. I have to look that one up. She spent 40 years as a social service worker, teacher and award-winning high school principal. She lives in Vancouver, Canada with her artist husband and enjoys her hobbies of playing with a Balkan dance band, baking and admiring her grandsons, which I think is lovely. Now, episode 100, there's a couple of things. Sometimes we do, we do giveaways and we do have one for you today. So if you would like to win a copy of, and Iona said, whichever book you like, it could be this one, it could be the first one in the series, it could be whichever one you choose, please, please leave a comment for Iona on Facebook and you will be entered for a chance to win whichever copy of the book you like. Brackets not affiliated with Facebook. I have to put that in there. Also, because it's the hundredth episode, Hank and I are going to give away a book each as well. I'm going to give away a copy of Sister Dear, a signed copy, or you could have The Neighbours if you like. I'm not sure if I have any of her secret son left, but either one of those two. And Hank is going to give away a copy of The First to Lie. So, not to the same person, but three different books for three different people. Leave us a comment. Um, you can even put which book you'd like to be entered for a, a, a chance to win. Um, and we don't, we don't, you know, if you say you'd like Hank's and not mine, we're not going to take it personally because obviously you already have mine. So it's perfectly fine. <laughs> so in all seriousness, three books, one of Iona's, Hank's The First to Lie, or, or perhaps a different one if, if you already have that one, and mine, Sister Dear, or The Neighbours. So just pop a comment in, tell us which one you'd like to read and we will choose not one, not two, but three different winners. And I'm sorry if this is being posted to Facebook, uh, not Facebook, dang it, Instagram later, but it's gonna be a Facebook giveaway today. Um, so there we are. So Hank just said, or if you've already read The First to Lie, you can have any of my books and of course signed. Yes, mine will be signed as well. And we just had a question for Iona, which of her books should be, um, which you should start with. And she said, it's nice to start with A Killer in King's Cove, the first one. But you don't, you don't have to. I know you don't have to read them in, um, in order because I asked Iona first. All right. So isn't that a lovely cover? An Old Cold Grave by Iona Wishaw. That was a lot of ado here this morning. Normally we only do about five minutes of ado, but um, the technical issues obviously were a pain in the butt. Mine specifically, ah, these glasses. All right, so let me tell you about An Old Cold Grave which Kirkus Reviews called Above the Ordinary and the Globe and Mail said is a charmer, a cleverly plotted story with a delightful setting and amusing characters. Once again, Wishaw keeps us guessing to the end. And this book, this one, as I mentioned, is the, oops, is the third in the series and it published in 2017. So you don't have to, to wait until you get a copy. You can see my stupid ring light in my glasses, can't you? You're gonna have to put my head down. <laughs> So embarrassing. All right, it's we're between friends, who cares? All right, so let me read you um, the blurb or the back cover copy of An Old Cold Grave by Iona Wishel. Even the smallest, most idyllic communities have dangerous secrets. When the Hughes ladies discover the skeletal remains of a child in their root cellar, everyone is gripped by different and painful questions. Who could the child be? 
Why were they not buried in the local cemetery? Who and where is the killer? Despite Lane Winslow's desire to distance herself from her wartime career as British intelligence, she is recruited to aid in the decades-old cold case investigation. While uncovering dark truths about her new home and navigating a, per a perplexing relationship with Inspector Darling, she makes a discovery that puts her in grave danger. So, before I read you the first chapter, don't forget, not right now, but don't forget to go and connect with Iona. So you'll find her on Facebook, Iona Wishaw Author, W-H-I-S-H-A-W. Uh, at on Instagram, she's um, IT Wishaw, and on Twitter, Iona Wishaw, and her website, where you'll find all those details, ionawishaw.com. Dead easy, and you'll see it actually in the description of the video, so you'll find it. But don't do it right now. So thank you, thank you, Iona, for letting us do this for you today, and of course to Touchwood Editions, uh, Iona's wonderful publisher. I don't need my glasses because it's in large print. Yay! So. <laughs> Let me read you chapter one of An Old Cold Grave by Iona Wishaw. So hunker down and let me read to you. This is chapter one. It wasn't quite the first day of spring. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh dear. <clears throat> Everything's going on today. <clears throat> Hold on a second. <clears throat> um, never a dull moment. I don't know how, <clears throat> Hank, you've done this for 40 years, being on air. See, my voice has got all funny now. <clears throat> all right. Let me try that again. This is An Old Cold Grave by Iona Wishall. <clears throat> Chapter One. It wasn't quite the first day of spring, but the air had a softness, a promise of coming warmth that made the people in King's Cove want to do things. Tidy up the garden, go through the sock drawer, fling open the windows to air out the house. Nothing in the splashes of sunlight stretching across the dormant gardens suggested that it was a good day to be confronted with the spectre of death. Gwen Hughes, a woman in her fifties who had lived in the same house since she was a child with her sister Mabel and their mother Gladys, stood in the root cellar, scowling in the dim light thrown by the single electric light bulb hanging from the wood joist on the ceiling. Her gaze was directed at the wooden shelves that lined either side of the cellar. Vegetables and fruit in tall blue-green glass canning jars stood on the top shelves and jams and jellies in small jars occupied the bottom shelf. On the other side, wooden boxes containing root vegetables and apples were arranged along two planks that kept them above the dirt floor. A bowl of eggs sat nearest the door. There was a funny smell, and it was this that was causing Gwen to search accusingly among the jars for the culprit, the eggs having already been exonerated. No one had given the place a good going over since the previous fall, when most of what was in there had been laid away to keep the Hughes women fed over the winter. Much to the surprise of Gwen and Mabel, it was their octogenarian mother who had suggested the purchase of a small refrigerator a couple of years earlier. But they found very little use for it besides storing milk and setting butterscotch puddings, a great favourite of hers. The rest of their provisions they kept in the root cellar, as they had for over 40 years, with no difficulty at all. Thank you very much. Gwen pulled jars of runner beans forward and shone her flashlight into the dark behind them with a small victorious, aha, she found carrots labelled 1944 that they had not gotten to within the year, as they ought. I told her, she said out loud. 
She took off her woollen pullover, set it on a box of apples, and began to rearrange the jars, moving those they had canned the summer before to the back. There were four jars of carrots from 1944, three years before. She didn't like to waste them, but didn't like to eat them either. One year, that was her rule. She put them on the floor by the door and went back to her arranging. As she worked her way along the shelf, she identified one element of the smell, vinegar. At the backmost corner, she saw where the difficulty lay. Part of the sod roof had fallen through the beams that made up the wood frame of the cellar and broken several jars. Pickled beans and beets and some canned carrots lay quietly mouldering on the shelf among the broken shards of glass. Feeling sheepish about how quick she was to blame her sister, she removed all the sound jars, stacked them on shelves on one side and contemplated the damage. The glass would have to be swept up and the sod repacked. Perhaps Robin could come and reinforce the roof a bit. She knew she or Mabel could do it quite well enough, but old Robin Harris would be hurt not to be called out for doing this sort of thing. Gwen pushed open the cellar door and the family's two cocker spaniels rushed from where they were lying at the front door of the house to the top of the steps, wagging expectantly. Get away, get along with you, she said, waving her arms at them. In the mudroom, she found what she was looking for, a dustpan, a small whisk broom and a pair of leather gardening gloves. Mabel, she called into the kitchen. The bloody roof has sunk on the back side of the root cellar and broken some jars. You didn't notice it, I don't suppose, last time you were in there? Mabel looked up from where she was kneading bread. And I suppose if I had, I would have left it like that for someone else to clean up, she said. And mind the eggs when you're in there. I put them up on the left next to the potatoes. And I found four jars of carrots from nearly three years ago. I thought we agreed we had to get to the vegetables within the year. I don't know why you bother canning carrots anyway. We have a whole box of them. They're a root vegetable. They keep perfectly well. God knows what other horrors I'll find in there, Gwen countered. I'm going to sweep up the glass and the rotting vegetables, but Robin is going to have to come up and have a look. Can you telephone him? Mabel turned the mass of dough into a basin, threw a dishcloth over it and wiped her hands on her apron. She did the baking and Gwen handled the contents of the cellar. I heard him and his noisy tractor at the upper orchard not 20 minutes ago. She pulled on a sweater and sat on the bench in the mudroom to thrust her wool-stockinged feet into her Wellington boots. I'll go up and see if he'll come look at it. Mother's napping. You can give the carrots to the pigs. She pushed open the screen door and called, Come on, you two, to the dogs, and set off across the garden toward the orchard. Gwen watched her sister and the dogs disappearing into the orchard and breathed in. It was early March and the world was beginning to wake up. There had been four fine days in a row and the furrows left by Robin's tractor in the ground, muddy from the early spring rains, were nearly dry. A few chives poked out of the soil in the herb garden and the vegetable garden wanted turning over to ready it for the aged manure they had collected from the two pigs and the chickens. She pushed open the door to the root cellar, propped it up with a box of apples and got to work. She had an old apple basket which she perched on the shelf below the mess and began to sweep the dirt, mouldy food and glass into it. She would decide later whether to rescue the lids or throw the whole lot onto the dump. When she was reasonably sure of there being no glass, she reached into the back for what looked like a large, unbroken chunk of sod. But when she tried to move it, she saw that it was a sizeable rock. No wonder the jars had broken. With both hands she slid the rock toward her and could see the gaping hollow it had left in the dirt ceiling. She felt in her trouser pockets for her flashlight and shone it into the space between the beams. Robin could put an extra joist in there. A cascade of soil fell into the beam of light. 
Gwen, peering closely with her flashlight, felt a sudden wave of horror sweep through her, and she stepped back, her hand flying to her mouth. Because she could see, soil encrusted and stained the colour of dark tea, some delicate bones, shreds of some decaying cloth clinging to them. It took a moment to hit home, but when it did, she blanched and felt herself stagger uncertainly, clutching the shelves for balance. The bones were most certainly human. Da, da, da. That was the first chapter of An Old Cold Grave by Iona Wishaw. I hope you enjoyed that. That was such a fun read. And this is, if you joined later on, book three in a series of seven. You can read them in any order, but you can also read them right from the beginning. And they are all available now. So you don't even have to wait to get your hands on that. There we go. See, it all worked out in the end after technical difficulties and a coughing fit. <laughs> so if you, if you just joined, uh, you just caught the tail end of this, this is our hundredth episode of First Chapter Fun. So thank you so much for always joining in and always tuning in. If you were looking for us on Instagram, Instagram was playing tricks on me. I'll see if I can go and broadcast there. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll check in with Hank and Iona. I'll check in with you and see what you want to do. Um, and also, don't forget to leave a comment uh, for a chance, not just one chance or two, but three chances to win a book. So Iona is giving away either this one or any any uh, one of her books, Hank, The First to Lie, or any one of her books if you already have it. And I will give you away a copy of Sister Dear or The Neighbours because I don't, I think I only have one of her secret son, which is up there. <laughs> Unless you want an arc of her secret son, which an advanced review copy, which I can also do. So don't forget to pop a comment in there. I hope you really enjoyed this reading as much as I did. And, and if you have not, if you hadn't discovered Iona, you now, you're really in for a treat and you have um, a series of seven books to catch up on, as well as the 99 episodes of First Chapter Fun, if you missed any of them before. So don't worry, we'll keep you, we'll keep you busy and we'll keep your TBR list well stacked. Stocked? Stacked? Stocked and stacked. Um, don't worry about that. Okay, so... Thursday, episode 101, uh, will be The Split by Sharon Bolton. So this will be on Thursday. Hank will read this one to you. Thursday, as always, um, on Facebook, right here, where you're watching right now. And hopefully we can get Instagram to, uh, to work again properly. Um, that would be really fun. So that's where we'll be on Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So today's read, once again, Iona Wishaw's An Old Cold Grave. Um, if you just joined, don't worry. Go and, go and watch the rest of it and listen to the episode. And Thursday at 12.30 will be The Split by Sharon Bolton. There we go. So that's it for today. That was First Chapter Fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching the replay, don't forget to leave a comment. I think we'll probably pick a winner maybe um, this afternoon. So make sure you get your comments in there today, uh, by this evening at least, if not before. Um, and hopefully we will see you again on Thursday. And always, until then, please stay safe, stay kind, and we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks for watching.